What's up, fight fans? Greetings from the Wrestleverse. It's your host, Billy, here. And this is Tijon. And it's time to uh, take it to the ring. To the ring. What is up, Tijon? Hey doing, man, man, I'm doing I'm doing fantastic, especially after last night. Last night was a great episode. I know we said we were kind of talking about it or started talking about it right before we started the show. And man, Monday Night Raw is getting there. Raw is starting to do a little something. It was a, it was a great episode. They did have some of the uh, some of the replays, which is very normal with WWE. Um, right. But then we got to see the Undertaker promo again. So if, if guys, if you didn't get to catch the elimination chamber, that was like the debut and it was a fantastic promo. So even watching it a second time was worth it, but I thought yeah, this was yeah. a great episode. I mean, I said it earlier, man, I get all the feels in the world looking at Undertaker's career because I mean, dude, that was my childhood. Yeah. Like since I was born from now, like he literally was like the most consistent wrestler to come up, you know? So like watching his ball. whole development. Yeah, exactly. But it's like his character never switched. The biggest mm -hmm. dramatic shift that there was was, you know, he was the biker dude. And then he got to the scary, you know, demon that he became. But other than that, man, like he was the most consistent wrestler. And yeah. I absolutely love Undertaker. He, he's probably, I mean, we kind of said it on the All Real Crew, like top three of all yeah. time wrestlers. Like, and that's not even a debate if we're just talking about wrestling the wrestleverse in general what he's done for the sport how many people he's brought in like mm -hmm. bro undertaker full-on undertaker you can't deny and, and, it and just the longevity of his career right. and, and a Consistent. stable point worldwide notoriety so it's fantastic yeah. he is up there I, he's up yeah. there with andre the great and hulk hogan yeah he's, he's solidified sure. that yeah i i definitely agree but you know I don't want to overshadow the Undertaker's accomplishments with like like with this episode because this episode, yeah. like I said, man, was fantastic. Um, University of South Carolina, which I thought was kind of funny that it was there. Like I wasn't mm -hmm. expecting them to say that, but you know they got a real treat with this episode. This is one of the better episodes. It they really out, did, you know. And unfortunately, yeah. it didn't seem like the crowd was as into it as I was. You know, maybe it was just a younger you know, crowd it, or it, something. It, yeah, that's what I was gonna say. You know, it's taking it's taking it's taking course on a college campus and you know that probably has something to do with it you don't know what they're they're on they're probably drunk just chilling you know like they don't want to seem too crazy into it whatever i had a great time with it yeah but it started off with you know brock lesnar addressing the crowd you know he finally got that belt back i know mm -hmm. that you know it was kind of iffy because bobby lashley of course was taken out he's dealing with some injuries it happens i mean yeah. yeah i mean the show has to go on you know the, yeah. like the world don't stop just because you're hurt and hey guys if you didn't hear yeah. about that he took a nasty bump to the back of the head during the elimination chamber he just got the whole chamber just collapsed and he got thrown in well not thrown into it was what riddle that got <laughs> thrown into it right and then no the austin thing, theory oh austin theory got theory. thrown in yeah Seth rollins literally threw yeah. austin theory like a rag doll and broke through the plexiglass that was the uh the chamber bumped into bobby lashley and then you know he hit the beam yeah, and not so much of a chamber. Out. It just disintegrated. So they got the, he got out. I don't out. think anybody was happy with how the elimination chamber turned out. But you can't really be mad that but with that Brock Lesnar got the belt because we all expected him to get it. That's mm -hmm. not really a surprise. It's just how he got it was kind of um, lackluster. Nobody really liked that um, process. But I heard yeah. through the grapevine that Bobby Lashley was actually already hurt. So maybe, you know, that uh, was a way for him to, you know, kind of recover and it still be somewhat of an entertaining thing and him not just get pulled out before it even started. But in my opinion, they probably should have pulled him. They shouldn't yeah. have even did it because you had all of our hopes up because I wanted to see Bobby Lashley and Brock Lesnar at the chamber. Like, yeah. Just shut up about it. Don't put that out there if it's not going to happen. Exactly. And I keep keeping, you know, KFAB, but, uh, you know, let's also let's also keep it real. But I mean, the crowd was loving seeing Brock, man. Just chanting oh, yeah. Suplex City Dude. and just going nuts. And he looks good with that Brock. belt. He does. South Carolina loves Brock, and they definitely gave him, you know, those praises. So, you know, here's this brandishing talking about how he got it. 
and I was honestly surprised with this interruption from Paul Heyman. I did not expect him to ever come back wow. to Monday Night Raw, and especially with the confidence and that cockiness that he had. Dude, he's got Brock Lesnar. balls like coconuts, man. He's, he's just... <laughs> He's he is like the guy, man. He just does not care at all. He's bouncing around, double crossing, making deals. But you know, Brock wasn't phased by all of his uh nonsense, you know, saying, Hey, you can't do this not without me. I've been paving the way for you. Brock's his own man now. Yeah, I mean, and Brock let him know that. But I think it was it was kind of good because that's just playing more on all the things that are happening with um Brock Lesnar and Roman Reigns. I don't know why I just like stuttered there, but you know, it's just everything that's been going on between the two. Paul Heyman is the instigator. Mm -hmm. I really feel like Paul Heyman is still in between. I don't think that he's fully sided with Roman Reigns. I think he's acting like he is, but I feel like if Brock Lesnar beats Roman Reigns at WrestleMania, he's going to then try to get back at Brock Lesnar and be like, you know, I, I knew that you would do this. And I just uh, was pushing you. Double to, cross like, on a double cross. Yeah, yeah I think that he's going to be like, this is what I had to do it so that you could push yourself to another level to beat Roman Reigns. <laughs> and I knew that you couldn't do it if I was in your corner, blah, 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 blah. I just feel like I, that's yeah, what it's I think Brock to. is smarter than that. I think South Park, what, yeah. they call that the Serbian double cross or something like that? <laughs> Serbian double cross. <laughs> I've never heard of it, but I like <laughs> I like the name. That's a dope yeah. name for it. I yeah, it's like the double, double, double cross. So. That's awesome. The Serbian double cross. <laughs> but no, so, I mean, into this and what he was talking about, I mean, Paul Heyman kind of just was like, I know that you want to have this title versus title match, but you have to face Bobby Lashley again before that, and I yeah. doubt that you're going to win that. And he kind of revealed, you know, that match is going to happen in two weeks in Madison Square Garden. Mm -hmm. And even if Bobby Lashley doesn't make it, he made it a, a point to tell him, you know, I'll make a fight that's going to be worth your time. So mm -hmm. best believe, no matter what, you're going to probably give up that title. And I love the confidence from, from Brock Lesnar. Oh, yeah. I mean, this is he, nothing he new. He flat out like, said, on, yeah, you're not going to go to WrestleMania with that belt. And Brock oh, would yeah. care less, man. Yeah, Brock Lesnar doesn't care. And, I mean, he told him, he was like, you know, I don't need you. Brock Lesnar's doing just fine without um, Paul Heyman. And, you know, Paul mm -hmm. Heyman took that to heart because, you know, it seems like Paul Heyman has a lot of pride in, you know, getting wrestlers to the next caliber. But for somebody like Brock Lesnar, it, it rings true. It was like Paul Heyman was just on the coattails. Yeah already had a huge following before him and it was just like okay i can i can take paul Heyman. like that's not going to do me anything anything bad you know even if i lose who cares it, it i'm i'm me yeah the wrestlers, i mean the fans will always love me yeah and because of that i think his pride is a little hurt because i mean it's true nobody's not going to rock with brock even if he loses against roman reigns brock lesnar's career is already like stamped as a legend yeah He's not going anywhere, you know, and, and Heyman tried to walk off and give him his back. And Brock was like, nah, he, he just went ahead and announced himself. Well, I don't need you and did a great job. And it's I, I thought it was kind of funny that Heyman still can't say Brock Lesnar without, you know, Brock Lesnar. Like even in conversation, I mean, he has that's to. Why I'm, that's the thing that I'm saying. Like, I just feel like he still has that love for Brock Lesnar. And that's going to show itself in WrestleMania because. If Lesnar wins, if he does win, I just feel like he's going to switch up. I just have that feeling. But, oh, Keith, I see you, bro. Brock could be any competition that comes his way. Yeah, mm -hmm. exactly. And I think that that's exactly what Brock Lesnar was touching on. Like, Brock Lesnar is Brock Lesnar, with or without yeah. Paul Heyman. That's and it's not like he's a young face. kid. He's been in this for a while now, man. He's, he's not a, a grown man. He's a professional. He knows how this, this game works for 20 something years man yeah. like this is this isn't anything new to uh Brock Lesnar he doesn't need Paul Heyman mm -hmm. and a lot of times Paul Heyman likes to feel needed you know even with with Roman Reigns in the bloodline he's a oh, lot yeah. more needed over there than he is with Brock Lesnar I mean let's just be honest yeah like yeah. Roman Reigns well, already has a attention. legendary career yeah but he gets a lot more attention with Roman Reigns in the bloodline than he does with Brock Lesnar that's that's facts you yeah know, I'm he's, not he's even entourage 
Exactly. But I love the fact that Brock Lesnar announced that he's going to be at Friday Night SmackDown. That's going to be great. I'm so excited for that. Another face-off between Roman Reigns because Roman Reigns is slipping. Roman yeah. Reigns is slipping mentally. And I'm so happy to see that because, like I said, man, I'm bored with his character. And I think everybody's bored with his character. So I'm starting to love hearing the boos rain down on the bloodline and i love that that sort of heel turn because man he's been a hero and a baby face for so long bro it's time to switch it up yeah well it is happening i think everybody's ready for a change and uh brock's yeah. gonna be the man to do that and he's going he's taking it to his doorstep on smack i don't so. think that there's anybody be better cool. to do it than brock oh, yeah. Lesnar, if i'm being Absolutely. honest because i mean it's not a far fetch to say that Brock Lesnar is like the new age Goldberg in a way. And mm -hmm. if Goldberg was younger, it would be like, you know, we could see Goldberg do what Brock Lesnar is doing because Goldberg used to just take people out like it was nothing. Brock yeah. Lesnar has a lot more swagger than Goldberg ever did. Goldberg would just kick ass and leave. That was yeah. always his thing. Brock but, does put on more know, of a show. But he's, yeah, he's exactly. the last of, like, the big, big guys. I mean, Otis is out there. He's big. It's it's a completely different kind of big. Yeah, But, exactly. I mean, he's the last just, like, monster that's in WWE right now. I can't really I think of. Seen, yeah, we haven't seen a wrestling titan, like a physical titan like Brock Lesnar. Nobody mm -hmm. has come in like that. You know, like, I don't see somebody who has the physique of Brock Lesnar or like Bobby Lashley or anybody, like nobody as a prospect or who's coming up looks like that. The closest yeah. that you're going to get is Braun Breaker. And even even he looks like a child. Compared yeah, to he does Braun not have Lesnar the height, man. Him. He doesn't have the reach or the height. Exactly. That's exactly what I was saying, bro. Yeah, like they're, yep. they're too new and mm -hmm. they still don't look like him. And I mean, it took years for Bobby Lashley and Brock Lesnar to look like they do. And if you want yeah. to go to The Rock, look at The Rock now. Man, yeah, that was... 40s and 50s. You, you were know, reading my mind. Huge. You know? How great would they it be to see like him this. coming back? He is. And, I mean, I kind of touched out on that on the yeah. All Real Crew, too. Like, that promo, we kind of saw The Rock in there. So, it's either this year or next year when it goes to L.A. I am amazing. super excited to see him there. I mean, that, that hype train that we saw on Super Bowl. Yep. Got it, bro. He still got that kind of like influence. The Rock is probably the I want to say the next biggest face in in like wrestling, but I mean he's synonymous with it. Even though he's not yeah. even in it, I mean everybody who sees The Rock, I mean that's that's WWE. That's WWE. yeah, man. That, that's, it's, it's heritage. Yeah, he's he's done exactly. it. And on top of that, he's a movie star. So rather than having you know a movie star coming into wrestling, you have a wrestler that went became a movie star and then comes back to wrestling. You know? exactly and i mean even i know john cena is kind of on that track but yeah. he's not going to be able to do it the same way that that the rock did it no man he's I he's lost like he's... some of that man he's gotten a little bit i wouldn't say soft because he's still i mean he's in great shape i mean he's he's a athlete and you really never get rid of that but he hasn't improved like the rock has <laughs> or lesnar nothing but like he's had nothing but an up upward trajectory you yeah. know after a while, John Cena kind of plateaued. It's not the same. It's definitely not the same. And I yeah. mean, I don't know what John Cena could do to fix that. You know, I think it's just natural. The Rock was always super entertaining. John Cena had to change his character a few times yeah. for him to keep that trajectory. The Rock was always The Rock. I don't yep. think he ever changed his character throughout the his People's entire Champ. career. Exactly. Exactly. I'm not you go like yes, that's exactly rules. what it is. Well, yeah. Yeah, man. The, he he broke a wall this down with him. the Super Bowl of appearance, man. You talk about that was kicking walls big. down. Yeah. That was super big. I think that that was probably the biggest thing that he could have did to like kind of preview him coming back. So I think we're all on edge to see him. But I mean, let's get back into the Monday. Yeah, yeah. So the bit, first fight card of the night, the Street Profits and Alpha Academy. So this uh, yeah. is another kind of match um, that we've seen again. They're facing off. Um, they're really just trying to set up who's going to go for the um, kind of the title. They're just trying to push for that title. Oh, yeah. I think this is all still, you know, road to WrestleMania. Mm -hmm. It all feels like that. Everybody's talking about it. And because of that, you know, it's just 
the stakes are higher. Every week yeah. the stakes are higher. So even though we're seeing the same matches, they fight a lot different. I mean, Montez Ford not only changed his look, but looked even more, you know, Right, I dominant. noticed that too. That yeah, was one man. heck of the way to start off that match. Like he tagged in and boom. I don't know what Chad was thinking, man. He was not paying attention. For somebody that had a 4.0 from a university, that was a pretty dumb move to walk into <laughs> yeah. that. Yeah, that I was 4. so disappointed. It definitely <laughs> failed him. But again, man, I, I love Chad Gable. I'm not going to lie to you, man. He, so it, I, I noticed the, the little mustache for Montez Ford, too. I was like, the oh, is that yeah, different? And the, yeah, and the cut. Hey, yeah. man, I'm not going to lie. I'm thinking about it. I may do the same cut. I'm I was, not, yeah, like, he looks younger. Don't. Hey, if anybody's watching this, I'm not rocking. I'm not jocking for Montez Ford. I've been thinking about it for a while. So when you see me with the cut, it is not Montez Ford. And if you make that comparison, I'm going to be mad. No, he stole it from me. I've been thinking about it for a break. But anyway, I might just keep rocking the long hair just because of that, because he, he did it first. But I, I mean, I like it because it still is like it's not even just a style change that could signal a character change. It's a big thing mm -hmm. when when somebody does that because he looks way different with the short yeah. hair. But fresh. in this shot, I mean, you can see it. Otis is just like Otis, as we all Man. know, whenever he steps in the ring, it's a game changer all the time. Yeah, he was just manhandling Ford. He just yeah. I mean, he tossed him out of the ring at one point. Oh, yeah. Like, it was nothing. He's a piece of paper. I mean, and anybody yeah. is to Otis. I just feel like Otis, like, he's super strong. He's super built. He just has no mic skills. And, mm. like, like, he yeah. has no charisma to him. But I think it's funny because he's, like, doofy. That's, like, the best word that I can describe <laughs> about him. He's, like, really dumb but it's just so funny he's just he's the epitome of a meathead he just goes yeah, in the him ring and chad are perfect you know i i don't they can't so break up they have other. to take they have to stay together but yeah, man i mean man. you want to talk about oh god what's it we got a comment yeah gable yeah. is super fun yeah i yeah he's, i love watching gable perfect we're both fans of him alpha academy's awesome Mas? That's that might be over Otis's caliber. Omos is it's a different kind of breed. Man, I don't see that I, happening very well. And Omos is getting better fast. When he first came out, he Dude. sucked. I'll be a hundred percent honest. Now, he's a goofy yeah, wrestler. Right now he's getting better. They did it before Otis might get the nod, but now Omos is Omos is making a big run and he's making he's a quick. huge splash. I don't think that Otis can take him. Amos is way too big. It, and he's fast. I'm glad you said that because if we're talking about it, all that Amos has to do is really get in the gym and, like, take – snort that pre-workout before every morning, you know, and get in that gym, gym and just do what he does. Bro, Amos might just start looking like a new Lesnar or a Rock, and that just might be what happens. But he's, he's really tall, and big guys oh, have yeah. a problem with their knees. So that's the big thing. I hope he's uh, loading up on glucosamine, you know, and MSM. <laughs> Oh yeah, like Keeping that's those the biggest thing that I'm worried about for him. I mean, everybody that's that tall, like you said, man, the joints fail you. So but the biotechnics they have run. now, man, medical technology is huge. I'm sure it can happen yeah, now more than ever. All these, all these vets that we see come in, they they look like themselves, and there's a reason yeah. for that. You know, the 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 medicine and everything that's been going on, it it's helping. So that's the only reason why we're seeing so much more entertainment from the WWE because they're bringing in such old superstars that we thought we'd never see again. Yeah. So, you know, you never know what, what might be in store with these newer guys like Amos and, you know, everybody else. So it'd I mean, be a great we'll matchup. See. No, I know. I, I said no early. Mind you, no, I don't Priest consider Damian Priest a big guy. I think it's all, boots. but I only don't, I only don't consider him that, in terms of the WWE, if you see him on the street, hell yeah, oh, yeah. he's a big guy. <laughs> like, oh, yeah. I'm not yeah. telling him he's little bit <laughs> his face. Are you kidding me? That's like seeing Steph Curry in, in the mall. I'm not tell saying that he's short or little. Like, no, he's way bigger than anybody regular. Like, yeah, that's a fact. But when it comes to the sport that he's in, yeah, no, nah, he he's not he's not touching Brock Lesnar. Plus, he's, Brock he's Lesnar out there with those call, two, open. three inch boots. He's got lift. Yeah. So, I mean, he's a tall yeah. guy, but he's not, like, big, big. You know, he's not a Brock. He's not a Bobby. But, and, uh, I mean, let's – let's this this uh this match, though, man, you want to talk about yeah. Montez oh, – or, no, it wasn't Montez Ford. It was um, 
Oh gosh, Dawkins. When Montez Ford threw him. Not, yeah, like no, we're gonna get into Dawkins because this was man. I love the fact that Dawkins is starting to like really branch out. Hold on, bro. I gotta address this. What are you talking about, bro? <laughs> no, I don't. <laughs> it's the hair. Now you're gonna now you specifically are gonna make me cut my hair. I don't want to be associated <laughs> with Xavier Woods. I don't, I mean, I like him, but come on. Yeah, man. you like don't his style to too. Me. You're, you're yeah, fan. I do like his style, but that's a little bit Xavier Woods ass. I Go ahead and man, put that out. Clean there. cut, man. Clean it up. I need a haircut no. too, man. Look how long my cream. I need a haircut. I, I'm not going to get into it any more than that. I'm just going <laughs> to answer with a solid no, and I'm cutting my hair now. Thank you, Keith. You didn't, you pushed me over the edge. I'd rather you like, no, no, absolutely not. So in this part, in this yes. part of the match, Chad Gable, he just man. launched Chad Gable over the ropes, which was super impressive. And I mean, they kind of countered it by like pulling him out and you see Angelo yep. Dawkins got tagged in. Now it's his turn. And wow, man, dude, this was impressive. When did we see this high flying ability from Angelo Dawkins? He's been he's been working out with Ford, man. He's taught him a couple yeah. tricks. He took out the whole crew. And it was a great flying, like sent on flip cannonball, and he landed right on yeah. his feet. And then went work right to the ramp and, and was like I know surfing it. Kinda it looks man. like he's about to land on Montez Ford, but he didn't. It was like a yeah, perfect he missed him. hit. Mm -hmm. It was a perfect hit. He did exactly who he was supposed to. And I mean, he was super hype about it. It was a great, great thing. And that almost set up this big um pin from Montez Ford, but Chad Gable with his technique. Yeah. I know you can't really tell from the shot, but Chad Gable has the pin here. He almost mm -hmm. got Montez Ford with that reverse. Yeah, hit. what? Montez, he came in with, I think he tried to go for a cutter, and then yeah. Gable reversed it with a, uh, it was the snap German suplex into a bridge. So it was just absolutely fantastic, and it shows his technical background in wrestling. Yeah, I think they call it like the Northern Lights or something. Uh, it was a Northern Light. I was going to say a Northern Light suplex. Yeah, I just wasn't sure if that was this one or I know that a that's bit what later. the commentators called it, but I don't know. I mean, like you said, it looked a little different. From like, I mean, he was know, up he high, and he definitely he had snapped to it, so it's, I mean, there's so many different styles, and they get it wrong, too. The only one that really knows them all is um, the Bobby wrestlers. Mack and, and Excalibur <laughs> from AEW. Yeah, exactly. Even him, I think he's making stuff up sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> Probably, man. But man, let's talk about Angelo Dawkins, man. Man, this was his so match. impressive. So impressive. I loved watching him this match. I think that this is good because, I mean, if I'm being honest, we've been talking a lot more about Montez Ford than Angelo Dawkins. And, and he must have been listening, man. Angelo, sorry, the Angelo Dawkins. Yeah. And I mean, it's it's been kind of designed for Montez Ford to be taking over these matches. And Dawkins has been a lot less of, you know, the watch, the, the person that people watch. Mm -hmm. But these past two, two, three matches, D'Angelo Dawkins has really come into his own and has been yeah. killing it. He's been what absolutely it was a couple of weeks it. ago. He had a singles match. Who was it? Yeah. It was fantastic. <clears throat> um, who was he wrestling? I can't think of off the top of my was head. Was it Dolph but... Ziggler? It was Ziggler. It was a Ziggler or Rude. You got me. I don't know. It was yeah, one of them. I'm not it was still a good match. But yeah, because it was still a good match. Yeah, we were talking about like Dawkins and that. I mean, he just did absolutely fantastic. And he's just he's really picking up the pace. Um, he's learning how to work those ropes and put those shoulder tackles in when it matters and showing us some new moves too, man. I was impressed. Yeah. And just oh, before I put it up. Yeah, Keith knows. I don't know how he knows. I promise he's not on our like little controlled stream or whatever. But yeah, that suplex. Let's get into it. I yeah. mean, my God. That was probably one of the most epic joints that I've seen in a minute. Yeah, this man. It was great. I thought that it was over after this. And it was. It was honestly over if it wasn't for Otis stepping in and saving Chad Gable. I mean, that was a sure. And it was and split victory. second. He got there barely in time. He was trying to hustle yeah. and he barely got it. Now, yeah, what is that is suplex called? That's called like a not no the blockbuster idea. or something, right? I'd have to look it up. Yeah, man. No, I, I have no idea. I wish I could help you, but all I know is that was one of the most huge suplexes that the um the Street Brothers have ever performed. It was so perfect. 
Yeah, it was it was so easy to get that kind of screenshot. As you can tell, I mean, it was Gable clear was taking a were... butt whooping. Yeah, still hanging. Chad in there. Gable actually did like was it? He kind of looked like Riddle. You know, this is the kind of yeah. being that we're used to Riddle taking. But I mean, the Street Profits are just getting more and more confident. I mean, you could see it here. Montez Ford was just going to town on Otis. Oh, that step up hell. in Seguri was absolutely picture oh, yeah. perfect, man. Montez Ford has a huge career ahead. Yes, D'Angelo Dawkins is doing his thing, and he's getting really better with, like, you know, making his own name. I don't know how long the Street Profits are going to have as a tag team, but it really is starting to look like these guys are starting to branch out and make names for themselves, even though they are a tag team, and that's their main, you know, notoriety. Both of these guys are starting to, like, really show do on their own. And mm-hmm. Montez Ford is still leaps ahead of Dawkins. Yeah, I'd love to see a Montez Ford and <clears throat> Mysterio fight. It'd be great. You know, it's just similar <laughs> styles, but so different. It'd be a lot of fun. I think that they need to, if I'm being honest, I don't want to see that fight. I want to see some more luchador people in the WWE because I don't know why. I don't think they can bring anybody in in that kind of format. And it sucks because, I mean, the people, the the GCW universe has that. And if they could bring even one person in that, I mean, ASF or Drago Kid or even somebody, somebody from that league, Blake Christian even, somebody who We see a little bit with, uh, what is it, Los Los Lotharios? They're a little bit of the lucha. It's nowhere near that caliber, though. You know, I mean, if you watched... I'm sorry to, to plug it into here, but man, if you watch any of the GCW events that happened this weekend, I mean, you could tell that kind of lucha style. If you're looking for that, that's the place. And yeah. I think once Ray Mysterio leaves, Dominic doesn't. Yes, he's he's trying to get there, and he will get there eventually, but he's not there yet. No. But there's a lot of guys in other promotions that are already at that caliber that Ray Mysterio has gotten us acquainted to in the WWE. And I feel like they just have been struggling to get anybody who is a luchador to get there. So they've had to really low-key abuse Rey Mysterio in a way because he's the only one that is is there. You think uh, Rey has something to do with that? He's trying to single himself out as the lucha guy? The one and only? I don't. Or you think it's just Not blatantly I WWE? Thought... I mean, being racist, you know, just, nope, we don't want lucha stuff here. To. No, I, I think that when it comes to the good ones, like, you know, Ninja Mac, Blake Chris, I'm, yeah. I'm only going to name really the, the GCW guys because that's what I'm I'm really watching. But when it comes to those kind of guys, you don't see that at all in the WWE. And we like to trash the matchmakers in WWE because it's so easy to do so. But at the same time, I really don't think that any any solid luchadors want to go to the WWE. Yeah. How is it possible that Rey Mysterio is the only one that can do all this so effectively? He's the only one. I doubt, especially with Rey Mysterio's age, he's almost out of here. Yeah. He's almost out of here. I don't think that Dominic can take the reins before Rey Mysterio really leaves. And it's going to be hard for Dominic to do that without somebody else by his side. Even Rey Mysterio had help. Eddie Guerrero wasn't, you know, fully lucha, but he was close. And that kind of helped, you know, it gave us a style to where we could watch and we can see Rey Mysterio develop his skill in the promotion. So, honestly, when Rey Mysterio leaves, that's going to be a huge hit to the WWE. Unless they can find somebody... Yeah, they gotta they gotta make it appealing. A lot of well, a lot of luchadors ain't, ain't ain't rocking with it. I don't think. Yeah, AEW's uh scooping them up, man. You can thank Tony Khan for buying all the wrestlers. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there's a lot well, of lucha in AEW. He said, "How about Montez against Jimmy or Jay?" Montez Ford would ma- would wax one of them if there's no interruptions. If there's no shenanigans involved, Montez Ford would absolutely dog them. I ain't even, like, think, even Jay? One. You think he dogged Jay? Oh, yeah, even Jay. I think that Jamie would give him more work than Jay. Yeah. At least from what we've seen in, like, the past, uh, the most recent matches, I think Jimmy has been improving a lot more. You know Bloodline's not going to let that happen. They better look at Santos. 
Even but Santos, Santos Escobar from NXT. Yeah, Santos Escobar is good. He is he good, but he's not real one, lucha. He's not. Yeah, exactly. You're looking at guys who have been Americanized lucha. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's not the same. It's not the yeah. same as you know them high flying acrobatic things that we're used to this stuff that you see is more like there's a lot more muscle involved when you see Rey mysterio it's all technique oh it yeah it looks good oh the it triple a great. luchadors stuff is the same it's it's just it's yeah. high flying aerial i just acrobatics. don't know how they're gonna make it more appealing for those guys to leave because i think it's more of a pride thing than it is money when it comes to luchadors I really think it's just Vince McMahon. I think it's Vince McMahon that doesn't want Lucha in WWE. <laughs> I'm serious. Well, I, I think he want, I think he I, believes us as fans don't want Lucha. We want, you know, well, but he's gonna I, I disagree. He's gonna have to I mean, I've been saying it for what, two weeks now. You gotta put that man to pasture. <laughs> His way of doing things is now like it's it's obsolete. If that's really the yeah. case, get Vince McMahon up out of there, man, because once Rey Mysterio leaves, you're going to lose a big fan base because it's going to get oh, yeah. boring. Well, they could gain a huge fan base if they had a little bit more of that. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. They got to they gotta make it more appealing for these guys. Recruit. If you're not recruiting, I just, I just find it hard to believe that they're not recruiting. You get what I'm saying? So yeah. I, I just want to believe that the reason why we're not seeing any big talent like that is because nobody wants to go in with that style. So hopefully they get some more people because, I mean, these other promotions are so much more fun to watch because of yeah. that style. Because at the end of the day, that's what we're missing from WWE. Rey Mysterio can't keep doing it. Dominic is not at that stage yet where he can make every fight by himself mm -hmm. that entertaining. So until he gets there, there's a gap. There's a gap. And we, as fans, we got to look, at, at, look somewhere else. Yeah. And I, I do. I get it from AEW. You know, with the Dark Order, 10, and then you have the Lucha Bros. Like, there's, there's, uh, or minus one is the Lucha guy. I mean, there's some great Lucha guys over there that have some great wrestling. Yeah. Oh, there you go. Yeah. This was facts. It kind of reminds me of when D WCW brought in Cruiserweight Division, Rey Mysterio, mm -hmm. I think, was their biggest draw. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Well, they were supposed to do the, um, I think it was the Cruiserweight with NXT 2.0, or not uh, 2.0, uh, 2.0. 2.05 or 205 live that's what it was 205 live but mm -hmm. they got rid of 205 and have nxt level up and got rid of the cruiserweight title yep and i mean even Masha said the same thing kind of like they seriously don't have any luchadors except ray mm -hmm. and yeah it's super weird i think i mean but japanese uh, wrestlers aren't the same they have their own style if yeah. you want to talk about SmackDown style. and you see um, Shinsuke Nakamura, he don't look like Ray. You know, yeah. like there's a lot of other of, of, of other wrestlers that have it. They lost Sin Cara, and that was a huge one that could have been the next one up. Yeah. If we're talking like somebody that had the same style, when they lost Sin, it was like, well, that's that's a huge like blow to the promotion because I think that they wanted him to be the next Rey Mysterio. So they kind of had no choice but to really lean on Dominic, but they should really start looking at some luchador-esque fighter because this is not good for the WWE promotion. But I we're agree, getting man. way into a black hole, man. We have Yeah, I was just going to say, man, match, ta talking man. about, you know, recruiting and bringing <laughs> up the new people, we got to see Tommaso Ciampa coming on oh, man. for WWE yeah. Raw. Yeah. So let me fast and forward a little bit. Oh. Let me let me let me go ahead and fast forward some in the in the slides because like I said, the match that we saw with with the Street Profits and yeah, Alpha Chad, Academy yeah, we, great, we did get ahead of ourselves. But, yeah, Chad and yeah, but they, Otis, they took the win. Otis was just the biggest draw in it. Like, let me not let me not say that though, because if it wasn't for Montez Ford lifting Otis, like he tried to show some big strength and he did. I yeah. was like, no, he didn't. I, I was breathless. I was like, no way. He just lifted Otis and he did. But man, it wasn't enough, too man. Long. Yeah, it just he the fell weight back was onto too much. It. Yeah. I mean, you can kind of see it there. He's leaning too far back. He fell, pinned himself. Otis yep. just took it easily. It and was, so that's it was how a, that first match ended. It was an impressive, but a silly move to see. When I watched yeah, I was like, what it was are you doing? You got you to gotta get your weight up, bro. You got to get mm -hmm. your weight up. 
oh, this is like 400 pounds. And that's, that's man, it's not the same as if you can lift it and bench it in the gym. It is not the same. When that's yeah. human, you can add like 60 more pounds of that, and it's going to be a Easy. huge difference. Because I mean, not only is it, it that, but it, they're moving. Yeah, you saw it. He just shifted his weight a little bit, and Montez went. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. All it takes is a little shift for weights. It takes you to to mess it up. So yep. when it when when that happens, you you got to be way stronger and be able to bench at least five six hundred. But you're not he, there he yet, got bro. I appreciate your confidence, and you had me <laughs> super hype. But you, you 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 messed up when that happened, bro. I'm not gonna lie, you messed up pretty severely. But like I said, man, this was still a really good match. There's a lot of promise in the Street Profits future. It's just not, um, it's not there yet. Yeah. Oh, we got a new comment. What's up, bro? Yeah, first Ricochet. I mean, Ricochet is, is kind of there, but he's not, not fully. But Ricochet is Rick, no, Ricochet is fantastic. Rick, yeah. WWE Ricochet's has really man. not given the chance for that. Ricochet to show off, man. He is great. He wrestled over in uh, New Japan. He came up from NXT. Yeah. The guy has a ton of talent, and I don't know why they're keeping him in the corner like they do. But well, he think has about a it. Ton I know he's in talent. SmackDown, but when Rey Mysterio leaves, do you think that there'd be an opening for um, Ricochet? Because I think so. I mean, he has some of the acrobatic moves, but I think it's more Japanese style than Lucha style. Yeah. I you know, he's that he's definitely sure. more hard style. Yeah, definitely, definitely. But I think like that a, you'll see the guillotine. It could at least give us a good substitute. Yeah. Oh yeah. I, I mean, he's he's very good, man. Like I said, I'd love to see more of Ricochet. He's he's a, an incredible yeah. athlete. He's really strong, and he's got some ups, man. He can go flying when he wants to. Yeah. He's great. Yeah. Well, I mean, I was just as, as excited as you were, bro. When we were talking yeah, about, you know, if we're talking about uh, new faces, man. It's we Tommaso called it. Ciampa. Yeah. But we, we also him, backed man. out a little bit. I thought that we weren't going to see him again in Raw, but here he is with Finn Balor. I know. I, man, what a what? dream tag team. Love it. It was so great. You know, they fought each other a lot in NXT. Uh, the championship belt went, I mean, they had a bunch of matches. But, wow, I mean, this was so good to see it on Monday Night Raw and to see Chompa finally get that chance. I mean, they got a lot of work chance. to do. I think that that preview that they said, too, because I heard it, I know you did, too, before the match started where Finn Balor said, you know, let this be our kind of WrestleMania run. Mm-hmm. So that's that's a big deal, man. That's huge, but there's a lot of growth that they need to, that they need to get if they're going to get there because, I mean – the the chemistry between Ziggler and and um Root is way better and that was on display. Oh, I mean yeah. automatically Dolph Ziggler was distracting Tommaso Ciampa. That was he fell on for that. like full on yeah like Ciampa just wanted to fight Dolph Ziggler. He doesn't really care about Robert Root. And yeah. Robert Root took full advantage of it. Every time that he turned around to you know mouth off, Robert Root was right there to make him pay for it. Because it's like bro you're in a match. It does not matter. <laughs> this is a tag team match. Don't forget where you are. So and, and then Ciampa took it really... and then gave it right back out, though. He was yeah, he did yeah, fantastic. he did. I mean, they were teeing off at him, <clears throat> but it really was, you know, Ciampa's time. If we're being honest, Ciampa looks like he's ready to go to he Raw because he took a beating. Yeah, he took a big beating from these guys, and he just went off. He yeah. went off. He he took the beating, gave it right back. It was fantastic to watch. Dude, that this knee was. Knee, oh my dude, god, that running knee. Yeah, it got it was, This whole sequence was awesome to watch. Yeah, it was. That was a really good match. And uh, you know, I think most of the crowd, you could tell they they haven't been watching NXT because they were ch even chanting, you know, we want ben, or we want Balor, we want Balor over and over and over. Yeah. And you know, Trump and I mean, kinda, we haven't seen Balor a lot. Yeah, he's been hurt. Exactly. He didn't look like he was hurt though. Yeah. So when I saw him come back, I was like, man, I, I really hope he just took his time and he came back correct um, because he's one of my favorites, man. I love Finn Balor. He is awesome. He oh, yeah. is just so well-rounded as a wrestler. He's in incredible shape and he's got a great future ahead of him. Definitely. But, you know, like like I said, this sequence was super epic. So we had 
Tommaso Ciampa like knock Ziggler up out of the ring, right? And then you had um him like Robert Roode tried to like get him in some kind of like DDT form or guillotine over the ropes. Finn yeah. Baylor came to his rescue, got him up out of there. And then from that point, you see this high flying move from Finn Baylor. So yeah. reminiscent of when he first came through to, to Raw. And it was so awesome to see. It was it was a great match. This was, was really cool. You know, I did notice um Dolph and uh Ziggler and Choma uh and Champa must have all been hanging out here in Florida because they all had the same tan and then Man, Finn yeah. just Pale white like a ghost. <laughs> I mean, Finn is what? He's super European. So yeah, I think I he's think uh, that, he's think he Scottish or Irish. It don't matter. Yeah, it don't matter what what son he gets, man. That's he's peeling. There's no there's no yeah, right. in his skin. It's, it's, I'm I, sorry, I thought that was man. just too funny. I was like, you could definitely tell they've been hanging out in Florida. <laughs> oh yeah, most definitely. But yeah, we got a few comments I want to hit. So Ziggler is about yeah. That's what I said at first. And I kind of questioned it off of, you know, Ciampa's um, rant that he went on at NXT because he was like, you know, like NXT is his home. Yeah. So I don't know. Like now I'm confused. Still going to Raw. But if NXT is his home and he's comfortable there, what's he going to do? I, See, I, I, I don't again, know, I don't know if this. Matching his words. Yeah, I don't know if this means he is bumping up to WWE. Um. Or maybe this is the break. You know, he's going to go and he's going to beat Ziggler in NXT. And he's going to show, hey, I can beat a professional wrestler in a big name like Ziggler. And if he wants to. Yeah. And this this is his chance, mm -hmm. you know, because he doesn't have the yeah. title right now. Braun does. So he can leave. Yeah. And he can leave on a big yeah. note. But if, if he's it, choosing not to, because, I mean, even he has been gunning for that title, maybe that's going to be the biggest thing. If he can't get the title from Braun Breaker, mm -hmm. maybe then he'll go and move into Raw. But I just feel like from what Tommaso Ciampa has vocaloid, vocalized, vocaloid, <laughs> Jesus, from what he vocalized to everybody in his um, you know, spiel that he did at NXT, he's not going anywhere. So I think that this is really just an F you to Ziggler. But it's still super entertaining to watch. And I really do hope that he goes to the bigger promotion because he is super fun to watch. And I know yeah. that a lot of people still haven't seen him, but there's been a lot of buzz around him. And he's, oh, he's been he's good, ready man. for a call up. Yeah, yeah he's he's ready for Definitely. it. I know he's a, he's a little bit older, but man, I think he's in impeccable shape. He's yeah. fast. He's tough. He's got a great style. Um, I, I love it. And I'm going to be there tonight. I'm going for sure. I'm taking my buddy, Chris. He's never Hell been yeah. to a wrestling match. So I'm going to get to see the Ziggler and uh, Champa match. Get him on firsthand. the show then. You got to give his, his his raw opinion too. That would be fun. I'm going to try to, man. He said, you know, Ricochet talking about, you know, he can match anyone. Well, if you're talking about a match that I would like to see, then it would be Ricochet and Finn Baylor. And Ooh. that would be more of a match that I would rather see yeah. than, than Finn Baylor do anything. Or very similar anything. styles too. Exactly. Very strong That's wrestlers. A dream matchup. Yeah, that is yeah, a good one for sure. But going back into the match, man, um, talking about you know the Dirty Dogs versus um, Champa and Balor. Yeah, Jesus. yeah, Champa and Balor. I mean, this the the biggest case, like I said earlier, man, was that Champa and Balor did not have that chemistry that Ziggler and Rude do. That's well, you know, Champa was was just in there trying to fight. I, I don't know if he thought this was a handicap match or he just was Chompa not just ring aware. just wanted to beat Ziggler. Yeah, that was he all did not want to tag he's, out. Yeah, but Ziggler was the smarter man there. You know, he's realizing that, you know, this is a tag team match. I'm going to use these breathers. Champa <laughs> is basically ignoring Finn Balor for the most part. Yeah. And because of that, you know, he's gassed. He's tired. He's getting his ass whooped now by Dolph Ziggler. It's not... A fun showing for him, but thankfully Finn Baylor comes to the rescue and yeah. starts going Diddy, Diddy. crazy. He's <laughs> fresh, yeah, exactly. Superhero mode, and Finn Baylor really took this fight. I thought that this was really going to be more of a, um, you know, a showing for Tommaso Ciampa because we haven't really seen him in Raw at all. But it was. Finn Baylor <laughs> with this debut or this like comeback was amazing, man. I had real fun with it. 
and he yeah. almost got the pin if it wasn't for a big interference from um from Dolph Ziggler. Yeah. But he was really showing us. He's got some great moves. He came in with fury. I mean, he was working the ropes, went over, knocked uh, uh, Dolph off, or I mean, uh, Rudolph, the ropes, and then came right back over to Ziggler, and then just massive shoulder tackles. Uh, there's a great Irish whip at one point. And then Brood, I mean, he came back with that great, like, hook shoulder swing, man. It was some just some cool stuff in this match. It was a good one. Very entertaining. Oh, yeah. So – Ending ending with the final sequence of the fight, man. Ziggler got rid of Ciampa, like threw him out of the ring. So we thought that he was a non-factor. Big mistake, right? And yeah. so um, Finn Balor came back out and knocked the dog shit out of <laughs> off Ziggler. I mean, came out with this huge cross face. Just yeah. knocked him all the way out of there. Got him up out of there. It was it was over from you that. You heard it, man. Ciampa it was back loud. In. Oh, yeah was over but Champa gets back in and you know does the sunset flip counter move on um Robert Roode gets the pin and it just crawled into it in. like he he put the pressure yeah. on there for a second he was trying to work his way out and Champa just walked in and put his shoulders right into the knees and held him down and got that count man yeah. it was beautiful I mean, so honestly, well done I think I think that everybody could tell Robert Roode was done a while back, and even Dolph Ziggler then, you know, was trying to, you know, keep him in it, do whatever he could, but once Finn Balor got him up out of there, it was a wrap. There was nothing that, that could save Robert Rube, but there yeah. was no recovering for him, so they was just waiting for a pin, and I'm glad that Ciampa got it, because like I said, this is this is a huge setup, and it just leaves us with a bunch of questions, like, the the world is Champa's oyster right now. He could choose yeah. to do whatever he wants to do. So, you know, we're backing him in whatever like venture he chooses. I for one want him to go to a bigger promotion because I want him to get the recognition that he deserves. With NXT, yeah. man, he's a star, but he has the potential to be a superstar. He's very very good. I agree, man. A hundred percent. Um, there could be a, di a little yeah. bit of a. Um you know, a personality change, kind of bring in a little bit more of that fighter that's in yeah. him, you know, and yeah, I think he'd be great. I, I'd, I'd like to see yeah. it for him. For sure. Me too, man. But all right, next thing yeah. up was The Miz doing, you know, his little, Miz his little spiel that he does with Miz TV. And he, he's been more so embracing this villain role that he's in, which I like. Like, he just is like, you know, I'm better than everybody. And so he yeah. kind of just berates the crowd, talking about, you know, like nobody. I think that's just none of him. You will ever really... I don't think, I don't yeah, think no, that's a heel thing. I think it's just Miz. I think he's just, he's become a rich douche. He's famous. All the fame has gone to his head. Perfect word. But that makes him a heel. I feel like for the fans, yeah. that makes him a heel, unfortunately. And I think yeah. that he's just okay with it. And he kind of All that Botox has because... gone to his brain. <laughs> yeah, all that. <laughs> Whatever chemicals, man, it's just making him more of an asshole for sure. But, I mean, he just was really going off, especially talking about, you know, his match with Rey Mysterio, how much he thinks he's cheated. And he even claimed that, you know, I mean, we've heard it before, but that Rey Mysterio literally does everything that um, Rey Mysterio, I mean, um, that The Miz does, but the fans, for whatever reason, love Mysterio more than they do The Miz, but The Miz keeps it real. So yeah. I think that, you know, that was enough to get the Mysterios up out of out of their seats and be like, you need to chill out because nobody agrees with you. Nobody knows what you're talking about. They're mm -hmm. not the same people, you know. And um, Mysterio even said, you know, I don't understand who would ever be your tag team partner, but I know it's nobody that's backstage because nobody rocks with you. Nobody likes you. So right. He was talking a lot, outside, of, a lot of crap for a guy that had his shirt half tucked in you know i was like what's going on man <laughs> yeah oh yeah he was drunk I, that's a drunk move. i don't know what was going on that's right? immediately what okay, I i'm glad you like, said it man all right <laughs> yeah yeah i don't know what was going on at all oh but what man. a big yeah, i go ahead no i was gonna say just what a big uh announcement i mean just kind of oh, i man. definitely huge, did not see huge announcement because first we got to see, you know, Dominic kind of take over and, you know, defend himself. Because yeah, Miz even, said, you know, my family even said that Dominic has, uh, like, ha deserved a contract. And Dominic was like, you know, like, yeah, I was bred for this. But best believe, you know, I'm here to stay. 
and that was huge. But yeah. you know, now that, what it takes. that now that you know they're not backing out, and there's clearly a big rivalry there. This big announcement that Logan Paul is definitely his tag team partner. I caught it. I mean, crazy we man, it, and like the all road crew, man. We were like, you know, nobody wants to see it, but that's kind of like the trajectory. And I think I, that the Paul I'm brothers, okay with both it. of them, would be you great. know, yeah. I'm I'm not a big Logan Paul fan. Um, I think he knows how to sell himself. He's an excellent marketer. He knows how to make money. Um, as far as wrestling and American wrestling, I think he would fit in very well, man. He's kind of already naturally what it what we want to see as a wrestler. You know, as far as like the you mic know skills, what I think would be the best, um, the best move for the Paul brothers. Not just talking about Logan, but if he gets Jake in there too, because I mean, honestly, their their clout and their hype is starting to die down in the combat sport world. We're kind of mm -hmm. tired of seeing them box yeah. basketball retirees and everybody but actual fighters that are that are like in their prime. We're all kind of over it. Yeah. So I think that their next big move is wrestling. I think that that's their biggest thing. And they all have wrestling backgrounds. They actually did wrestle for a good part of their lives. So it's not like they're new to the sport and they're not new to the limelight. Yeah. So I think that if they both go into it, the Alpha Academy should take them in. Ooh. And at least give them some good, like, background and some some good moves. But you they know didn't go I mean? to college. Like, them, Did they even finish high school? They don't have to go to college. <laughs> they, I think they finished high school, but they don't have to go to college. I mean, you can't – it's Alpha Academy. Man, you know, yes, Academy. Jackie, I know. I know. Y'all said it too. Yeah, that's – yeah. Yeah, check out the fight kitties. Check them mm -hmm. out. They, they broke it. They a great job with the rumors. You got to check them out, man. But, yeah. No, yeah, I they, think they didn't break the, the tinfoil hats out for edition. that one. You know, they were pretty much like, hey, was it's rumored. Good. and It's yeah. on Twitter, man. It's got to be true. <laughs> yeah, once it's on Twitter, man, it's it's solid. Nobody's a Logan fan. I mean, why don't you say it? This man's got crazy heel heat. Yes, they both do. Yes. Nobody likes him. You pay to see them lose. <laughs> Every pay-per-view that you've seen on Triller, you didn't pay to watch them beat somebody. You were yeah. like, maybe Nate Robinson can beat them. Maybe Floyd Mayweather will get them up out of it, even though he's like 50. Maybe, like, you know, it's always just that that maybe factor that they will they will get humbled. That's not going to happen, though, from their personality. And that and kind Miz? of personality, yes, exactly. And I think Jake is not far behind. And once that happens, they're actually going to make a pretty good run. In oh, the I think WWE. so too, man. I think he'll be able to pick up pretty quick the style of, of wrestling, you know, the style Logan of fighting. Did. He, he, he's going to pick it up. Logan already has the commit charisma. He yeah. definitely already has the charisma. You could see it there when he, like, he said that he has pool toys bigger than um, Rey Mysterio, <laughs> which was like, yeah, we all know that Rey Mysterio isn't the biggest, but man, that's that's. <laughs> Pretty disrespectful. Coming I was waiting for him to pop up and Hurricane Rana his ass. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And it was surprising because, you know, Dominic immediately accepted the match. was like, if this is your guy, then yeah, it's no problem. But I think that they um didn't take into yeah, consideration. Yeah, Dom's not that, ready for that, man. You know, yeah. First off, you know, the Miz is not one that's going to fight clean. And you can see him in the back of the head with a nice little elbow. And mm -hmm. Logan was not far behind, you know, beating the crap out of him, Miz beating the crap out of Rey Mysterio, and then hit him with, you know, that skull crushing finale. Like, yeah, man. he's been Taking watching it from, the promotion for from a while. Miz. Yeah. So, I mean, he's not going to be just, you know, some guy that you pick out the crap, the crowd just to, just to beat on. He's clearly been yeah. watching, clearly been training. So I think he's enough actually, of an athlete. This actually might be a good match. Yeah, I think he's enough of an athlete and uh, competitive enough to where, you know, it'll actually be very, very entertaining and fun to watch him. Yeah, I'm actually I'm, – I'm interested. I won't say I'm excited for the match, but I'm, I'm interested, interested to see what yes. happens. I concur 100%. Yeah. yeah, because this could be a really big point to where – how how will Logan Paul be introduced? Is he just like, is this a one fight deal? Or is this going to be the start of, you know, his career? Is this going to be a career change into WWE? I don't know if he'll sign contract. Um, I don't know, because WWE has to own rights for all of that. So when you're a WWE mm -hmm. wrestler, they own your name. So 
they would have to give him like a nickname or something. Um, and then I think he's just too much of a marketer and businessman himself. I mean, he he's going to want his own stuff. It, it just depends. Because what's the one thing that the Paul brothers have been about? Yeah, that's true, man. That it's money, about money. Man. All they got to do is put in that much of a, like, if they just put enough commas in that, he may just be like, you know, I'm, I'm fine with that. And he could, like, bend the knee to, you know, WWE. But Logan Paul is a big name, especially in a lot of people that, have I mean, off, I want to say from he's going to make a lot of yeah, wrestlers. He may not be cheap, very but it may jealous. Be worth it. Oh yeah, but that's a good thing. That's a target. A lot oh, of people, good point. Because yeah, because there's already a target on his on his back in in MMA and in boxing. Yeah, you know the Paul brothers are hated in those kind of universes. So if he brings that to wrestling, not only would that bring a lot more intensity to fights, but that would bring a lot more names into play and we would get a lot more you know um aggressive fighting which is what we need from these bigger promotions because it's been lacking when you see the indies or even like the smaller big promotions mm -hmm. so yeah it's i'm definitely actually gonna bring really a lot of draw. interested in it i think it's a good thing yeah yeah for sure yeah so what do you think about the next fight card we get to see rhea ripley versus <laughs> nikki as hatch again i'll take it thank you I got you. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody else get him. Damn. Yeah, get him. I'll take it. <laughs> yeah. I've gotten Paul Walker a lot. Stevenson or Veer? Mm. No. Yeah. I don't no. know. That I mean, yeah, but I don't know. I think that I already heard the rumor about Logan Paul, and I was like, that fits. That's a perfect Yeah, I'm pretty sure Veer. Fight Kitties uh, got that from Twitter. I think that was Lexi yeah. that found it. Um, she follows a lot of that Twitter stuff. Yeah, once I heard yeah. that, it it was a wrap. Yeah, I just I just automatically knew. But yeah, like you said, man, let's get into Nikki Ash and Rhea yeah. Ripley once again. I think it's over. I think it's done. I don't want to see it anymore after this. Man, Nikki was uh, just hoarse. Man, she was getting fired up. She was screaming. Her head was not in it, man. Yeah, Nikki is too distracted, man. I don't know what Just it's going to take, but I fury. think she needs a break from seeing these guys. I think they need to stop putting her in the ring for a little bit. You know, put her in them same therapy sessions that um Alexa Bliss got, got you know, like <laughs> do something because she has so much animosity that it takes away from the fight. And I mean, Rhea Ripley is just so cool, calm and collected. Just beating the crap. It was in a competition. Oh, this whole fight. She just manhandled Nikki ASH to the Poor point Nikki. she left the ring, is talking to the commentators, talking about how she's a villain. Like, you yeah, have a screaming. whole fight behind you. A whole fight behind you. Why are you talking to them? You're losing. You're not doing anything to Rhea Ripley. And Rhea Ripley is just like, you know, I could be a villain. If it's yeah. to you, I'll be a villain. Yeah, and no, she really was like, I'm, like, I'm done with this. I'm going to show you. Yeah. And, uh, you know, Nikki was just bouncing off of ripley i mean she she could not get a move in edgewise and exactly. she just took it was an ass pretty open. quick yeah it was a very quick match in terms of especially this event it was probably the quickest and yeah. after a riptide finisher it was over this is oh, fantastic happened in the elimination chamber yeah R rhea ripley is back full force i mm -hmm. think that she's done with this i think that she's now like you know nikki can can kick rocks i don't care about her her feelings or whatever like if she's mad, she's mad. I think that she got all her aggression that she needed to get out. It's it's over with. I don't want to see this. I think anymore. Rhea's I think good. Just needs to I don't know. If, yeah, that's true. I don't know if Nikki's done. I with think it, that though. once Nikki, no, she doesn't have to be. She could be. She could still be mad and have some animosity, and that might propel her to prove herself and get better. You know, but I don't want to see this match immediately again. Put her against some other people. Let her fight and beat on a bunch of other names a few times three or four times and then call out rhea ripley again yeah. like do that L let her go against alexa bliss now that she's back something give us something Ooh, that'd be a good one to like, like develop to the character because rhea ripley has taken this and gone farther than nikki has yes nikki has now proven that you know she's not trash but the one thing that she's been doing that rhea hasn't is pleading her case Mm. And it's been distracting from the fights. Like, if you can't just leave it in the ring, it's it's not translating well. So I think that yeah. what's going to happen now is she's just going to have to, you know, take some time away from this beef with Rhea Ripley or use that to propel her 
and her career and just start fighting a bunch of other people. I think that's very well put. Um, we definitely saw that in this yeah. match. Um, she, she, her head definitely. was not there. She was enraged, you know. And yeah. speaking of enraged, you know, Damien, Damien Priest, he yes. was in our next fight card. Man, he was able to kind of, again, about it. If we're bring about that somebody heat. Who, yeah. If we're talking about somebody who has been able to control their emotions in a yes. great way, Damien Priest has been doing an amazing job. And this was a fantastic display against Shelton Benjamin, who mm -hmm. also brought Cedric Alexander in. And yeah, he was a I mean, side. this was not a fair fight. Yeah, this was not a fair fight. I mean, Cedric Alexander, you know, don't let this innocence fool you. He was really like bothering uh, yeah. Damian Priest a lot to the he point where, to you poke, know, he was trying to poke the bear. Just as much. It was really just a handicap match. I mean, Dude, that was a it, mean. He kick. was getting beat. Good shot. Yeah, that that was a yeah, bad one, man. It, it was rough. I thought that this was gonna not go very well, but you know, Damian Priest took it in stride. You're gonna have to do a lot more to somebody like Damian Priest to get the belt from him, and that was on full display. I mean, yeah, there was a couple times Cedric you saw Alexander out there really quick. Yeah, he popped him. That was a good one. I mean, there's a couple times you got oh, to see, yeah. like, Damien. He really kind of came out, but it was almost like a recharge. Like, he pulled out this, like, inner demon and got fresh and then pulled back into his center and started whooping ass again. I mean, it's it like – It was really fun it's to like watch. You can see you can see that Damien alter ego come out, but he controlled it enough to where it wasn't like he was going to mess it up, you know? It was, it was just enough to where he could be um, – aggressive and and kill it against these two guys and yeah. still you know win the match and don't get me wrong Sheldon Benjamin did everything that he could trying to capitalize on that last distracting because Cedric was gone after that but yeah. Priest just took it all in stride like I said after a huge choke slam and that reckoning finish that he did Sheldon was yeah. done it was over what do they call it like the south pin, heaven choke slam wow yeah south of heaven Great huge, stuff, man. Huge move. And, I mean, this was, like I said, a fantastic showing. And I think that that just really is a huge, like, um, character development for Damian Priest because he's now able to rein it in and keep it to where, you know, he can use it to win. I mean, we touched on that, I want to say, two or three weeks ago where we were like, yeah, how can he, you know, keep it was against his uh, KO. if he can't rein his in? Yeah, if he can't rein in his emotions. No, it was against um um Styles. Cuz he lost Oh, it was Styles. Yeah, when he beat yeah, he AJ lost Styles. and then came back and won. And we were like, now that he's yep. on a slide, what is he going to do? And like it was all about his emotions and trying to get his emotions in check and keep that alter ego at bay or make it to where it works for him and he did that and this challenge that he issued you know, Man. this open invitation to get to WrestleMania is a big one, and I'm so ready for it. Yeah, his his voice is so deep and intimidating. That was a very scary challenge. And to see yeah, Finn was. Baylor come out as quick as he did, it was like, oh, you want a world-class uh, fighter? Someone that's next level? Yeah, let's talk about You that. got one. I'm ready for that. I was pumped, yeah, dude. I started excited. clapping. I was going nuts in my living I mean, room. This I was, is this is like finally Finn <laughs> Balor is back. Yeah. They kind of teased it when, um, you know, he had his last fight against Austin Theory and he lost that one. But I think he's back. I think that he's finally feeling good enough. And this is a really big match. I think yeah, that that's man. a really good one. And I'm, I'm super, super ready super for that excited. one. This is fantastic. Yeah. The fact like that I said, he, I'm a he big immediately fan. accepted that call up. And, you know, he just had that match too. And yeah. look, it doesn't even look like he fought. He's ready. <laughs> he is full on ready. I'm so excited for that. Yeah, man. That's gonna so be a good one. I. I know he's a lot smaller, but that's that just adds to it. It's gonna be a strength versus agility match, and I love you know, those kind of matches. He's not that small of a guy, you know. I bet he's yeah, every he's bit not. of two twenty. I mean, he's solid, and he <laughs> yeah. can move. He's strong. So I mean, he's not yeah. a Brock by yeah. any means, but yeah, no. I just, I mean, Damian Priest just looks the part of a bigger guy. So yeah, you know. That's what that's what um you know makes it more you know you lean towards him when it comes to the power. But like you said, Finn Balor has been you know in them big lights before, and he's and, a very technical know, fighter himself. versus exactly. you know, uh, Damien, who's more of kind of a brute. 
you know, a little bit more. He's he likes his strikes and his kicks. And uh, Finn's gonna wrap him up, man. You're gonna see it. He's gonna get put in an arm bar. Yeah. I guarantee it. I'm ready <laughs> for it. But we got one comment. Why do they still call Sheldon and Cedric the hurt business? I don't know. I yeah, think they should um, stop because that's, Bobby made it clear that no that was done. Yeah. So I think that, you know, that's dead. I think after a few weeks, that's just going to fade away because that, yeah, there, that was official. No to that. That's the second time they've yeah. lost. Uh, what they lost against Omos and then got oh, yeah. insulted by Bobby Lashley backstage about a month ago. Like, say, <laughs> no, it's done. <laughs> he called Dewdrop Donut. <laughs> oh, hey no, say what you want that, about that match drop. say what you don't want do that do drop made bel-air look strong i don't care what you Bro, say my favorite match of the night yeah i'm so well, ready to get into it yeah so, so let's let's touch on the reggie stuff real quick the 24 yeah, hour I, I don't even want to i already yeah, said we got to it. real quick I, I don't really care let's touch it and but, go you know whatever he appre- he apologized to um you know you apologize to yep. her about his um you know his, sneaking, his transgressions yeah, or whatever sneaky. yeah whatever nobody really cared yeah like but you know he had to apologize he was gonna give her the pin and like you know kicked out as like a joke she then kissed him so i guess he may be out of the friend zone i don't know but he ended up giving the belt after that and so she retains her belt he had he looks like he yeah, came look at that. Okay, from I'm glad you got party it. from the 80s all that powder on his face. I don't know what's going on, but he's happy. She's happy. So cool. I don't know what that means. I yeah. don't really care. I don't think anybody really gives a fuck. But yeah, I'm I'm gonna just move on from that one. If you want to touch on yeah. it, I'm gonna let you, but nah. I'm done. I well, I'm curious it. to see what our her fiance <laughs> thinks about this stuff. She's dating some boxer, Diaz. Um we don't so. beat the hell out of out of <laughs> <laughs> Because Reggie don't want no smoke up. at all. But anyway, yeah, yeah, move it on. Next match, yeah, definitely. So next so match, donut, the big man, one. That's messed up. That's that's not cool. I can't get with it, man. Because Dewdrop is a dog, man. But Jeez. you know, Bianca Belair Jeez. won the Elimination Chamber um, mm-hmm. over the weekend, and that it one. was a well-deserved win. Yeah, I'm super happy for her. So she gets yeah. to go to WrestleMania once again. That's a huge match. She's going against Becky Lynch, and while she was talking. Yep. Of course, Becky Lynch had to step in and talk her trash. And she just let it be known, you know, her hate for Bianca Belair. Because ever since her match with Bianca Belair in SummerSlam, you know, the crowd has really turned on Becky Lynch. And for some reason, Becky Lynch doesn't know why. But, you know, that wasn't really a clean showing. And that kind of helped turn yeah. her into the not so, you know, baby face that she was before she really got up and that heel kind of look yeah and she hates that and so she despises Bianca Belair for it. and the biggest thing that she said that resonated with me was you know you saw my match with Lita and I love Lita so just imagine what I'll do to somebody who I despise and I was like "Ooh, that's a bar that's a good one yeah that's it's like, a lot I was to super say man. excited about that yeah so that's going to be a good one. I'm really excited for that. And Bianca Belair was ready to fight her right then and there. But you got to go against Dewdrop first. Yeah. And Dewdrop is not somebody that you could just walk over. She did fantastic in this match. I loved watching this. Yeah. Um, she is getting in better shape. She's moving fast. I mean, at one point, she did that fantastic like front flip into a bridge. You show me somebody not not to mention i mean she's she's a lady but i mean anybody that size that can be that athletic oh, yeah. and move and then keep pace what this was a good 15 minute match you know so a good maybe 15 20 minutes so it was it was a good match yeah and it was I, a great match it. and i love the fact that becky lynch was you know calm on, on the side but go ahead no it's i was just gonna say um you know blatantly i, I think dude drop made bel-air look strong the 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 Dude. suplexes like Dewdrop was having Dude. to flip into it. Even the KOD, Dewdrop was stepping onto the ropes. Yeah, if you weren't paying attention to it, it, you would have missed it. But I, I, I definitely saw it. But it's like once she set, Belair is fine. And I mean, I, you know, I got some shots of it because, oh, yeah, like, like, like you were saying, man, Dewdrop definitely is way stronger, way bigger than Belair, and Belair had to find. like different things to win that match and she did 
not taking anything from Dewdrop, but you know, Dewdrop seemed a bit overwhelmed in the beginning, yeah. trying to Once get out the, the pace... ring, get herself together. Yeah, yeah, that pace was just a bit more than what we've seen from Dewdrop. Dewdrop likes a really slow barn burner kind of match where you know she just controls the tempo, gets her breath, hits you with a bunch of moves, and then you know gets her breath again before you know keeping it on. It's a very yeah. slow kind of match. Bianca Belair realized that and just kept the pressure on her. And that was really the case for the match. I mean, this one here was, thanks to Becky Lynch, you know, a big distraction from Becky yeah. Lynch caused Bianca Belair to take a huge crossbody. Yeah, that little pop-up like crossbody. She's way bigger. She's so much bigger and so much heavier than anybody Dude, that she's faced. That was and a rough a while, one. You know, Belair, Belair like tried to catch her, her too and just got yeah. flattened. It's and then they couldn't happening. pull the suit. It's gonna, yeah, it's gonna take some momentum to get, you know, um, Dewdrop to be, um, you know, up, up on you. And from that point, she could do something. But just lifting her is not gonna happen. And she had to realize that after like the first few times she tried to suplex her. But she finally did get one. Yeah, it was well, a little yeah, rough. Dewdrop tried it to set it in, perfect. and and failed. And then that's when Bel Air got that momentum that you were talking about to heave her over. And I mean, again, Dewdrop, she landed perfect because if she she could have made a mistake there and really, really hurt herself. So she took that blow very well, but it still knocked her she out, did. man. That was that was a big one. Man, that's a big take. Dewdrop is the best wrestler of the Royal roster. Can't wait till the powers of B release the beast. Man, no, she is yes. a lot of star potential. She has a I'm whole telling lot you, Dewdrop is good. She is Dude fast. Is super she good. is strong. She's got skill. I mean, did you see the so running canning ball she did into the corner? Yeah. If that would have just been timed oh, out yeah. better, game over. Definitely. I think that Dewdrop has been getting the shaft. And, you know, I think that eventually she will get her chance. But unfortunately, for the first time, I, I don't think I would have ever said this, but the, the women's division is stacked. Yes, it is. So, it I really think that is, man. This is just an Flair, unfortunate time for Dewdrop because if you put Dewdrop in just four years ago, it would be a whole nother circumstance. Or like any time before now, we would be having a whole other conversation about Dewdrop because Dewdrop is super entertaining, especially for her size. Do you she think she would so have been accepted four years ago? I don't think they would have mattered because that's like saying would Rakishi be be um, accepted? You know, like there's a lot of huge fighters in the men division that we wouldn't have accepted and struggled to accept. But when you see them fight, you have no choice but to. And I think that Dewdrop would have been one of those first cases, and she kind of still is. Mm -hmm. You know, we don't see big women all in the division. Everybody yes. is little. Everybody's agile. Everybody is strong, but they're not Dewdrop. Nobody with that and physique she's agile. is on. And she's fast. Yeah. So and she it's... is the only one that's really putting on for the, the bigger women, like, for wrestling. And I think that that is a major oversight because, you know, she does deserve that airtime. And I think that she will get it. I think that pop that she got with Becky Lynch, I, I think that that was really good intentions, but I don't think that Dewdrop um, – did well in it i don't think she did good enough and i feel like if that had better um you know backstage kind of um popularity then again we would still be having a different conversation but i don't think that it did that well and so she kind of put herself back into the regular conversation so she's gonna have to work her way back a little bit get her mic skills up do a little bit more to get her cockiness and her confidence Get get your talking skills up a little bit. Get your swagger up because you know you are you you're the only one that's doing what you're doing for real. So mm -hmm. when she does that, man, yeah, the sky's the limit. She just has to get there, you know. So I mean, I definitely agree. I'd like to see her just smash um, Sasha Banks or Liv Morgan. Um, I think she would destroy either one of them and definitely get some bragging oh, rights yeah. after that, and that'd be great. Um, you know, it's. It would just, I just see so much talent from her. If she could, I think you did it well, said it well. If she can get some more of the yeah. backstage momentum and maybe some more of the fan base, um, it'll jump her up and get her some some of the bigger fight cards going. Uh, yeah. But I'm a big Dude, fan, I'm man. loving she's, these comments. She's great. 
Oh, yeah, oh I gosh, I didn't even, holy cow, we're blowing quick. up over yeah. here. <laughs> you probably said, you, mean you know, you mean best female wrestling. You think that AJ Styles is still the best wrestler on Raw? I don't know about that. He's getting know. better, but I want to say the best. He is. Yes, I would best. not say the best wrestler. But, yeah, like to to, well, I mean, to the boss's point, man, you know, four years ago, Ryford did. He, she was killing the Indies. Like, oh, I can see matter. her destroying She's plenty of dudes in WWE. Yeah. <laughs> Who's the girl from GCW who I like to watch? Jesus Christ. Don't let me fail on this name now. There's this woman in GCW who has been crushing. <laughs> yeah, that was hell of a hell of disrespect. Thank you. Let me get into that. There's this girl in GCW though who's been there for years and has been dogging women and men alike. So you I know, can over see in that AEW, from, from uh, there's Layla Hirsch. Uh, she she's actually wrestled guys in a scholarship to get where she's at. The only other big uh, mm-hmm. like lady I can think of would be Nyla Rose over in the uh, AEW she's she's really big oh yeah oh yeah man so i mean there's like i said like i mean you're only proving the point man the women's division is so stacked with such yeah, great man. talent for once so there's so much going on but man a, like dewdrop just needs her respect and i think that that was something that becky lynch realized because she looked shook she did in, like the commentator section she was she like, did you know, man she she had I'm to take off her jacket she, some water. she was starting to sweat yeah yeah she was looking a little worried and I mean, for good reason. Look at the power of Bianca Belair. This power bomb, this goddamn KOD, like we were talking about. Yeah, yeah. Oh, wait. Yes, thank you, thank you, Bar. Take. Uh, I mean, Ali Catch is exactly who I'm talking yeah. about. Ali Catch is a great draw. But that's you know, that's going a whole other level, man, man. Yeah, Ali Catch is great. If she was in the WWE, shut up. We're not even <laughs> talking about anybody else. In the WWE, if Ali Cat ever ever branched out, but going into this man, this was my favorite part, and I had to make this the thumbnail. Man, she hit Dewdrop with this KOD, and it was amazing to watch her just walk around the ring with her. That was God. impressive. Talk about testing the ring. She threw that woman down so hard. That was not a take it easy KOD. She's like, I'm putting you away, and she this was staring was at one. Becky the whole time, like I'm coming for you, girl. Oh yeah. Yeah, so of course Great that match. led to the pin. Look at the shame on Becky Lynch's face <laughs> in the back. Like, oh my God, like, how can she do that? And of course, you know, she got it together. She's holding the belt. I mean, she's held the belt for three years now. So yeah, she's allowed to have this confidence and this swagger. But Bianca Belair just might be coming for that belt. If she can do she that is. to do drop, I mean, Becky Lynch is a way lighter opponent. <laughs> so Belair is, it's is not- leaning up. She, you could tell she's getting her cardio yeah. in. You know, she's always – she's she's thick. She's strong. You could tell she's one of those girls that just does, like, CrossFit. But she, she you could tell she, her cardio is getting upped up, man. Like, she's really getting ready for WrestleMania because she's gonna she might have to wrestle for an hour. That's – I mean, most of her fights lately have been barn burners. So this yeah. is definitely going to be one of those fights with Bianca Belair. I do not think that it's going to be a quick match. I think that, you know, I know that she was talking about how she got rid of Bianca Belair in like 26 seconds. That's not going to happen this time. So this is definitely going to be a much bigger one. But I've been wanting to talk talk to Jacob because he's been giving us comments. And, you know, he says that, you know, Raw wasn't entertaining just because we've seen the same matches, which I can agree to. But that's yeah. what WWE They're does. Guilty. But they yeah, did a that is a WWE of, thing. Yeah, it is a very big WWE thing, but, you know, they've been doing a pretty good job of making them still entertaining. I think that they can give plenty of their talent more airtime, but they just don't. So I agree with you. And they're trimming back um, on the DQs. The DQs have been Yeah, I like that. I definitely like that, though. The DQs were disgusting to me. It's too much. I hate that. Finish the damn match. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. (laughs) Um, He also had a really different take when it came to wrestlemania talking about cody rhodes going to to wrestlemania and finding like randy orton that's a hell of an opponent like i think randy Orton. i don't know about that one cody rhodes ass i mean sammy guevara just beat cody rhodes (laughs) yeah 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 he did and so i think that randy orton Randy you Orton think Randy Orton's not going to? Nothing. That guy Come looks on, he's in, in Randy impeccable Randy Orton would shape. destroy him. Yeah. Yeah. And I'm glad um, Nadula T- TV kind of like touched on it a little bit because this is the next thing. So I'm going to preview it with what he said. 
he he really thinks that AJ Styles, you know, is is that guy and thinks that he's gonna step up to the edges challenge. Now Ooh. with your comment, that would be a dope match. I'll give it you would. that. I wanna see I Theory. Think that AJ Styles would win that. I would love to see Theory more. That's exactly theory what I was going to say. You beat me to it. Did I? Because ah. it's the new guy's time, bro. No, I'm, I'm glad you, you man. did because that's exactly what I was thinking. You got to stop giving these one. older guys airtime, man. But I think that that would give AJ Styles the um the moment, that WrestleMania moment that he's been talking about. So, you know, I'm not mad at it. I think that that may be what they're setting up for. But personally, maybe. well, I, I mean, see... you heard Edge say, like who's who's gonna step up? Who's gonna take this? Because I'm gonna put you in the history. In history, you're gonna go down in history. Like everything he was saying almost sounded just <laughs> like what Vince McMahon has been telling Theory. Like this is his opportunity to become famous yeah. and become WWE history. This is his chance. So if he yeah. steps up and accepts, and even that Daniel match, said it. Boom. Even Daniel said it here, you know, like he thinks, you know, we'll remember why AJ is AJ for a reason. I'm not taking anything from AJ. Oh, yeah, he's great. I think that this is, once again, a great way for, you know, him to get that WrestleMania moment. But, Mm -hmm. you know, it's it's been it's been his time for so long. He's already um, he's He's probably already going to get into the Hall of Fame with his career. You know, he's he's done it. So it's time for some new guys. That's all I'm saying, man. I mm-hmm. think that there's there's a lot to go into it. And, yeah, you're probably right that Austin Theory doesn't deserve that kind of big name yet. But what a good way to put new wrestlers in. That's the thing. It's yes. not about Austin Theory himself. It's just about the fact that you have to put these new guys in that spotlight. Give them some respect. Give them almost the same respect as these older guys because we're not doing that. As well, a whole, and- we're not. You Let's give some looking. respect if you don't to, want to the Austin same Theory. Matches, if you don't want the same matches, then start get start demanding that these new guys take over the old guys' spot. Because the only reason why these matchmakers keep giving us the same four fights every goddamn week is because yeah. we want that. And you, you know, Daniel, I'll tell if, you. If us as fans stop theory, it, then it'd I think be different. Theory does. I think he does deserve it because he has beaten Jeff Hardy. He has beaten um, AJ Styles. He's been in Royal Rumble. He's been in Elimination Chamber. He's fought Brock Lesnar. I mean, he has a lot of experience, man. He, he beat KO. I mean, he's beaten a lot of big names. This could be his shot. And he he's has the skill. I don't he's care not if he's a young. rookie. It's not like he's fighting like he's green. He's fighting exactly. like somebody who deserves yes. to be there. So, yeah, I do agree with that, man. But, you know, let's, let's talk about the Edges call out, man, because – yeah. If anybody deserves to continue to be in WrestleMania for as long as he wants to, that's the Edge. He talked about everything that he's done for the promotion, and admittedly, Absolutely. Edge is probably – I struggle with it because I call him my favorite fighter, my most favorite fighter. But at the same time, there's so many other people that I can interchange with that list, but the Edge is the most consistent. Yeah. He is, like, my favorite fighter that, that I ever watched as a kid. And so hearing him talk, seeing him back in the ring was always something that I enjoyed. And, you know, I love seeing him in WrestleMania. I love the fact that he's gotten back in despite his injuries. You know, he's had one of the best careers and, like, the the most, like, entertaining careers that we've seen despite everything that he's gone through outside of the ring. So I am more than happy to hear this call out, man. And hearing him say, you know, if anybody – who wants to fight me, I will make you immortal in that ring. If yeah. anybody has that kind of say so, it's the edge, bro. Cause he has done <clears> that. <throat> and you can bet your ass that he's gonna make sure that that match at WrestleMania is going to be a legendary one. Yes. Cause every match that yes. he's put on has been epic. And I'm ready for it, man. I'm really happy. I thought that was a great promo. Probably one of the best ones of the, yeah. the episode. And I'm pumped for it, man. Let's see who comes up and accepts it. Yeah. But, all right, so let's get into the main event, man. This one yeah. has been something that I was thinking about. I'm surprised that it is happening, but, I mean, you, I don't see Kevin Owens and Seth Rollins not being in WrestleMania, so they're going to find a way. They're going to yeah. find a way to get into WrestleMania. And so they kind of agreed that they're going to be a tag team, and that's how they're going to get into it. 
So they're facing, um, you know, Randy Orton and Riddle just to get into that wrestle, uh, well, that Raw Tag Team Championship, um, you know, contention. Yeah, trying to get the belts from but, them. Yeah, but, uh, like, you know, I think that um, Kevin Owens still has, you know, that, that side play talking trash about Texas still because, you know, he still had the barrage or berate Dallas, Texas a little bit because he's well, like, Seth you know, Rollins as is long going. as I get in, even if it's so trash. Yeah, even Seth Rollins kind of did. So I he's, think that he's this going is no matter what, right? Play. I don't know. Seth Rollins? I think that he will, but there's no clear path. Oh, okay. It's not like there's a match for him right now. I know that now Seth Rollins will more likely get a nod to go before Kevin Owens does. So Kevin Owens has a lot more to to prove. Mm-hmm. But, you know, I don't see – I definitely don't see a, a Royal Rumble – I mean, not Royal Rumble, but a WrestleMania without Seth Rollins. Definitely yeah. don't see that. Well, this is so uh, this was a good match, man. You know, and I thought it was, it was funny – KO was uh, just constantly like, that's my best friend. It's my best friend. It's my buddy. Love this guy. And he's kind of like mocking Riddle, almost making fun of him. Like, no, I'm better friends with my friend than you are with yours. Oh, yeah. (laughs) Yeah, I saw that. I saw that. I thought it was silly. (laughs) It was funny. Oh, that's kind of a – that's a really interesting take. I got to – I want to branch back off real quick to to talk about Jacob's thing about, you know, facing Shane McMahon. I think that that – may have worked if there wasn't that big falling out. Shane McMahon is not with WWE anymore. Uh, Shane McMahon's old, man. That's not going to be good. <laughs> he is old. It's, it old. wouldn't be good, but I think that What's that the last time he even fought? The match. That, but that's my point. I think that that would have been the match, though, that would have been like, okay, Austin Theory is really the protege because kind of just been said and you see him backstage, but if he beat the hell out of Shane McMahon, it was like, okay. Like, he really is the lackey now. And that would have given him that character that he's kind mm. of building up to. That would have just been the staple. So I do agree with you there. That would have definitely worked cool. as a storyline for him. I don't really care about his storyline, per se. I just think he's a great wrestler. And I think that he is a, a trailblazer for the new talent that the WWE is bringing in. And hopefully it doesn't agree. get lost with these older guys. Because if it keeps on the track, it's going to, like, it's going to – gonna fail like pay for it in the long run so i'm very i'm very much looking forward to what austin theory brings to it because he needs to but getting back into you yeah. know rk bro <laughs> and seth rollins and kevin owens man you can see this was a great match. Alpha academy watching backstage because they couldn't you know interfere like they did before and it looked like they kind of regretted interfering like the first time because now they have to worry about Kevin Owens and Seth Rollins in a way that they didn't think that they did before. Yeah, this you know? just popped up out of nowhere. Yeah, and I mean, they did what they needed to do. Again, if you want to beat RK, bro, you isolate Riddle. But Riddle is a tough man to wow. keep Yes, down. he is, man. He was. He can just yeah. take such an ass whooping, take a man. Beating. And then jump he right up. Can. He is the Rocky Balboa. I mean, you said it before. He is the Rocky of the WWE. <laughs> he just yeah, seems man. to get better as he gets beat. He's Goku. He's Rocky. He's anybody that you yeah. can think of that as they get beat down, they just get better. And that He's got to take display. a couple knocks to the chin know, before he wakes up. Yeah, they seemed more ruthless, too. You know, they seemed a lot more ruthless this time around. I mean, you could see it kind of in Riddle's face. They seemed a lot more um, aggressive and angry when it came to fight fighting Seth Rollins and Kevin Owens here. I gotta yeah, say, I feel like it's, uh, you know, the edibles got to wear off before Riddle gets going. You know, he just gets knocked around yeah. a little bit. He's like, all right, cool. We're not going to disrespect fight. Otis too much <laughs> on this, on this live stream today because Otis is not about to eat the tag team. <laughs> belt. Jeez, Otis is actually are... a dog, bro. Please. The internet Otis is ruthless. Alone. This man is, so ruthless. That man is super good. <laughs> I don't want to keep trashing Otis. Otis is super great. Yeah, I but like getting Otis. into it, man. I mean, like Randy Orton just threw. I love this sequence. This is one of my favorite. This sequences. was great. So let's get. I want to talk about it. Yeah. So, um, Randy Orton threw Seth Rollins out the ring. Mm-hmm. Then from there, he almost smashed him through the table. Kevin Owens stops it, 
takes Saved his him. place inadvertently. Yeah, and I thought that <laughs> Seth Rollins left him for dead. And I was like, oh, yep, I, I figured that. But yeah, then right? he dives at Randy Orton like a missile. Dude, just like pushing him over the table. That was such a great sequence. And did you like, see? Okay, so he is there. Yeah. Did you see uh, Randy like uh, KO was laying on the ground? So then he almost tripped on KO, Randy Orton. Then he like hopped to try to like, you know, not eat the table, try to like land on the table. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Bounce off that. the table, hit the chair. And when he chair. hit the chair, yep. <laughs> he hit like the 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 armrest here, the hard plastic. Right here and right on his kidneys, right in between. Hit the chair and then bounced off. He hit so That's hard pretty, on that hit, man. It's pretty bad. Yeah, I was kind of worried. But, I mean, I think that he needed time to recover. And, I mean, Kevin Owens and Seth Rollins took full-on advantage of it. And they actually started um, isolating Orton from Riddle, which we haven't really seen. And he was taking a beat down. But when yeah. Riddle got in that ring finally, after this, like, suplex that he did riddle came in and just started crushing seth rollins Dude, i mean he was wow. bouncing around like a pinball i mean he's so <laughs> fast hey man i love daniel daniel's hilarious <laughs> none of randy's voices told him to duck <laughs> Yeah, I don't know what voices he was hearing because none of them were were there that time. He was getting crushed. Man, Randy was looking uh, man. baby face, man. I think him and Montez Ford went yeah. to the same barber. He looked like ten years younger <laughs> with that fresh cut. Yeah. Oh yeah, I think that they they definitely went to the same barber. But man, I think that this was really Riddle showing. It was great, and if it wasn't for these interferences, man, Riddle yeah. had it. But you know, Kevin Ao was Owens smart doing what Kevin Owens does. Yeah, I'm I'm not knocking it. I'm definitely yeah. not knocking it. You have to do what you have to win, especially if you want to get to WrestleMania. Now is your time, bro. So I'm not mad at it. And nah, it made for some really smooth. great entertainment. This huge stomp that he did to the chest and neck of Riddle. Like Seth Rollins is is phenomenal with the with them boots, man. It's yeah. crazy. Well, he caught uh Orton outside of the ring just before that, too. Stomped his face into the mat, kept Orton out, mm-hmm. and then just continued the pumbling of Riddle. And then he took a, mm-hmm. a massive neck breaker too. Just he was Oh yeah. That was exactly. a great match, man. Man, yeah. I mean, this just showed the the tenacity of Riddle after he took this Santon and this frog splash from Seth Rollins. Eight back those, to back. Refused to be pinned. Randy Orton gets tagged in. Seth Rollins runs away. Again, I thought that that was the end of Seth Rollins. I thought that he was like, nope, I don't want it that bad. I'll find another way. <laughs> like, I was 100, I was like 100% expecting for Seth Rollins to abandon Kevin Owens during this match, and he didn't. But at this point, he did. He got hit with this crazy DDT. Like, it looked like it was about to be over. Kevin Owens somehow stops the RKO from happening. He gets stomped. Yep. The outside of the of the ring there it is you ends, got a picture you know look or, at that oh yeah yeah <laughs> That's fantastic. it was a great stomp i can't believe how vicious that stomp is to be putting everybody out the way it does but he man it's around. serious this was a yeah. this was an awesome and, awesome match oh yeah and i mean once that was happening we see the um flying bro take out kevin owens but Rollins saves the day again with another stomp man mm-hmm. and that causes the pin to happen so now we're going to see, uh, what is it, like a three-way tag team match? Yeah, that's uh, oh, with Alpha that's Academy. Huge. Yeah, oh, you know Seth that Rollins match. and KO. Look at these faces. <laughs> They're so <laughs> angry about it, man. They're not happy, but I'm so I, – I think that that's going to make it much more entertaining because that's just yeah. another factor. And, you know, the Alpha Academy and RK Bro have so much beef that now that – you know, Rollins and KO are in, that's going to take away from it because they can't just focus on each other. Because once they do that, all Rollins and KO are going to do is eat popcorn and let them beat the hell out of each other and then take the win. Yeah. So I'm super excited the to architect see has how a plan. this match develops. Yeah, <laughs> this was great. You see what Daniel just said? Glad Randy got rid of the mustache. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's not his style. He looked like a cop. I yeah, he like looked like either. a pedophile, man. Like, Come here, little candy. You want some candy? <laughs> See, I was trying to be nice, and you had to go and go all the way off. Yeah, he, he did. He definitely. Daniel's like right on that one. I'm gonna agree with children. 
<laughs> yeah, I know. I'm I'm a hundred percent with you there. But before we go fully into the comments, man, I want to yeah. get into the ratings because this was a really go. good one. You want to start it off? Yeah. So here at Take It to the Ring, we like to give each fight card a fight card rating. So we have five for Fight Forever, and we have four. This is awesome. Then three is you still got it, and then two is uh just a what, and then you got one boring. Worst of all, don't even bother watching the episode. Watch us. We're going to be way more entertaining. So what would you give this episode, Tijon? Oh, man. Just because of the amazingness that I saw this weekend with GCW, I'll keep this at a four. But this yeah. was a five-star rating for WWE, if I'm being honest. But for the WrestleVerse, I give it a four. Yeah. This, no, this, this, this was a earned very a four. complete showing. It, yeah. it, it earned a, a solid complete. four. Um, the promos were great. Again, if you didn't get to see Elimination mm -hmm. Chamber, you got to see that Undertaker promo again. That was really cool. Um, and then even just yeah. a little bit of the beef again with Heyman and Brock. Got to see a great tag team, Ciampa and Ziggler. That's going to be tonight on NXT. I'm going to be there. Tijon and I are going to be reviewing it tomorrow for WrestleCap. So I'm going to have some yeah, sneak peek Definitely. pictures. Hopefully get some cool videos for you guys. I'm going to get there early. Mm. I want front seats, man. So, for, for me and the and these ratings, I gotta. I'm starting to really compare them to, you know, GCW. And I yeah. get the differences for the matches that we see with GCW are all pay per view, so they have to go crazy. But if we're being honest, the pay per views for for anything WWE related have been kind of lackadaisical, Very and we, they haven't been the same. So all the pay per views that I'm looking at, I expect to be a five star. And so far, GCW has blown it out the water. I don't see myself giving, you know, five stars to regular fights. They have to be really, really great. And, yeah. I mean, I kind of lamented on Friday Night SmackDown that Shinsuke Nakamura and um, Sami Zayn fight was one of the best fights I've seen out of WWE in a Sammy long, Zayn long time. Sami Zayn is way better than he gets credit that for. That was so I know he gets the so cheesy great. stuff. I, I went back. I watched your review. Um, I had a bunch <laughs> of stuff I had to do, but – I had to go back and watch yeah. it, man. I was like, this this is a must-see. It was so... It, it really it was. was. It was fantastic, that match. And, I mean, I have nothing but good things to say about it. And, I mean, none of the matches here lived up to that match, for sure. But, overall, it was a really great fight. I, I had a I had great time with every event or every fight that happened in this event. So, you know, yeah. Like you said, I, it would give it a four. Lesnar's ugly sweater gets a seven. I guess seven <laughs> out of ten, unless you're saying it's a seven out of five. So you loved it, bro. But hey, like, I mean, yeah, this was this was super, super fun to watch. I had a great time with it. But you yeah. know, let's get into some of these comments. Nadula said it also, you know, we've heard the rumors too about Stone Cold Steve mm -hmm. Austin possibly getting into WrestleMania. If he goes against Randy Orton, I could kind of see it. But we kind mm -hmm. I, I think that Randy Orton would just dog him. I do like what daniel said more you know owens and and uh austin looks more like it's going to happen because of you know kevin owens really trashing texas i think that kevin owens is just looking for more avenues to get into wrestlemania either way he's gonna find a way the same way seth rollins is gonna find a way so will kevin owens yeah. so i i really do believe that you know um i'm just super excited for it man the only P pbv that he delivered was last year Money in the Bank, and Crown Jewel. Crown Jewel was I good. I mean, yeah, Crown Jewel was good. I give you that. It definitely was super good. But, ooh, what is it? Uh, is a really good match at TakeOver Dallas. So, hey, man, I wouldn't be mad if they put that as, like, the rematch on WrestleMania. The caliber that they fought at is only going to get better, and I think oh, that yeah. that would be dope. And I think it will be super fun to watch Rick Boogs back uh, or like, you know, like on the side because I'm a huge Rick Boogs fan as well. So with that, man, I'm I'm really, really like looking forward to, you know, WrestleMania because that better be a five star. If that's yeah. not a five star rating oh, to it, me, it is, I am it's done with event. WWE. <laughs> yeah, for sure. <laughs> and, and I think fans, Tommaso Ciampa like is going to find a way. Yeah, I was I was just gonna say real quick, fight fans, if you like that that Zane and Nakamura match, that is a hard style sort of wrestling. So check out mm -hmm. NJP and Lady J. She does a whole review yeah. on NJP, a whole other podcast and review. So check that out, man. There's some really great stuff yeah. over there, and a lot of also talent, with man. Lady Sean J. Spears is amazing. 
And if we're talking about, you know, the stuff that Lady J does, because she's been really spearheading a lot of this indie stuff, we're, we're going to talk about it. Let's talk about AAA. Because like we oh, said, yeah, WWE is really lacking in that luchador and lucha department. Triple A is that full on. Oh, so absolutely. if you're looking for something that's going to give that, get get into Triple A. Like you're going to get a whole lot more and you're going to find a lot less to complain about, I promise, if you start branching out into these indies. I know it's easy to just focus on one of them because WWE is so huge, but it is by far not the best promotion oh, out yeah. here. I so would agree. please, it's definitely wrestling. Chance, it's fun man. to watch. Um, but AAA, yeah. it's going to get easier to watch here in the states. Um, they're going to ha- start having more English coverage, so it is. It's going to be a yep. lot easier for us to watch, and I, I understand Most a lot definitely. of the beefs that've been building up. But when you guys, when you start getting into this, you're going to see wrestlers that you've seen all over the place and still compete, and that's that's awesome, man. I love seeing stuff like yeah. that. Yeah, because that's the thing. A lot of people think that once you know these big names leave the WWE that they're like just done wrestling. No, yeah. not by, not at all. You know, I think Sin Cara is in NJPW now, isn't he? Mm-hmm. Or is he, is he in AAA? Yeah. He's in and one then of you those. have, um, you know, you FTR know? who's in AEW that also mm-hmm. wrestles ROH, that also wrestles NJP yeah. and AAA. You and got they have all the, of those styles. One of man. the most hated faces in, in MMA. And I'm struggling to remember his name already. And that's probably a good thing. We talk about him a lot. Especially on oh, CM um, Punk, all real crew, yeah, CM Punk, fucking CM Punk, that guy. <laughs> he's in greatest. AEW, you know what I mean? Yeah, no, not in MMA, he's not. <laughs> but you know, props are at least trying. I guess I'll give you that. I won't trash you too bad because at least you tried, just in a stupid, stupid way. But yeah, he's you a know, wrestler. It is what it is. Yeah, for sure. He's a tough but, wrestler. He started I mean, off doing like backyard wrestling. And that that's yeah. hardcore, man. So he's he's a tough guy. Yeah, but, he but just being wasn't hardcore is not the same as you know MMA, especially yeah, in the man. bigger promotions. Like I said earlier, I think that he should have just started out small and got his way back up because he would have gave a lot of indie MMA promotions a lot of um, you know, like uh, I guess recognition if he started out small. Dude. Yeah, man, ton of comments. Yeah. All right, well, you want to wrap these up and get yeah, out of here? Man. We're pushing two hours. Yeah, dude, we're really killing it. But, man, these comments were going crazy, man. But what's up, man? You caught the very last second. So yeah, what's going on, man? Yeah, definitely check out the podcast. Out. There's plenty of other WrestleCaps, man. We we keep you updated on all main events and all wrestling. So, guys, bro. we got it for you here at Take It to the Ring. Bro. Yeah, and then t going to get man. you on MMA and all real crew. Oh, yeah. Most definitely. Check us out, man. Follow us on Instagram. You see the, the banner going down below. Check out TTR Wrestling, the All Real Crew. Check out Take It to the Ring all throughout YouTube. Yeah. Just just watch us, man. We do everything. And if you couldn't tell already, we literally cover all the wrestling promotions. And if there's not something that we that we cover, let us know and we'll more than likely get on it. Because man, there's so much out there and we want to make sure that everybody gets their good showing. So you know, yeah. leave some comments too. As you can see, uh, we interact with you guys all the time. Talking about Bullet Club, man, that's Uh-oh. a whole nother segment. I, you're gonna get me talking for a whole nother oh, hour yeah. when we start talking yeah. about Bullet Club theories and what's yeah, going man. on in AEW <laughs> with Jay White. I mean, there's there's so me. much. There's rumors of Tony Khan. Me. Oh yeah, gosh. Yeah. Where <laughs> we'll catch you? us out. We got to do like a whole, whole little hours, segment. Bacon eggs for life. <laughs> you missed the whole two hours. <laughs> You didn't get us back into it. We got lives to run. You're killing for me real, here, man. Bro. For real. Leave some comments. We'll respond, <laughs> no, though, man, man, for sure. Keep, get yeah, on the exactly. We'll edit this We're, out. We'll talk to you. We got you. Don't worry. We'll talk to you and, you know, catch the comments and stuff. It's going to be super fun. I'm super excited. Oh, you got one more question. question. All right. What do you us. think? Should we hear it? Come on. We'll Only because I love yeah, bacon bro. and eggs. <laughs> I'm not that much into it. Oh, well, this isn't him, but it came first. Yeah, I mean, I don't think anybody is. I think everybody's like, okay, whatever. There's already so much more. <laughs> so random. Scorpio. You got me. Scorpion all the way. Scorpion. When I was a kid, when I was a kid, I was a huge Scorpion fan. I actually yeah. like when I played Laser Tag. That was my name on Laser Tag was Scorpion. Now, yeah, as man. an adult, Sub Zero all the way. You kidding me? Now as an adult. Sub Zero got it. I love Sub Zero, but oh, yeah, I, 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 I love to get over here. Scorpion. 
Yeah. Oh, yeah. Man, nobody could beat me when I played with Scorpion. So, yeah. Yeah. Nah, that's that's there you go. It's like Tekken with uh, Liu Kang. Or not Liu Kang, Law. Hey, man. You got you to gotta cover Bullet Club. I don't know when we're going to do it, but they're, they're ready for it. <laughs> so, well, hey, we Daniel can do it, man. And Bacon Eggs for Life. Yeah. Check out whenever... Uh, you just got to check us out because I'm gonna let I'm gonna let him go off on the Bullet Club because he's got a lot to I know I know that Billy's got a lot to say about it, but that's, that's that, it, it's, a, it's big We're news going, going on. Over um, time, man. Yeah, yeah. So guys, we got to go. We'll we'll save that for another time. Maybe we'll uh, we'll do some advertising, do something separate. I know Lady J has a lot to say about yeah. Bullet Club too, um, and my buddy Jovi too. He's got some great speculations. So, um, but yeah, guys, check out our sweet merchandise. It's down there. We got coffee mugs. We got some cool stuff for the ladies. It's still a little chilly. You can get some sweaters or coffee mugs, all that good stuff. But until next time, it's Billy here. And it's Tijon, man. Don't stop believing. <laughs> Keep it real, guys. This was awesome. Peace out. Great episode.